Well, the subject is terrifying, and our guest is Jim Mitchke, who served his country well in Vietnam. Jim, good to have you on board, bud. Thank you. Glad you could be here. First of all, we're using you. <laughs> and I want, I want to be up front with you because we're going to be promoting some uh, Vietnam specials that will be airing starting tonight uh, and continuing on for the next couple of weeks. And we wanted to bring you in because you had firsthand experience as a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Now, let me, let me stop right there for just a minute. What sort of helicopter did you fly? I flew the AH-1G Huey Cobra. So it was a gunship? It was, that, that was the, the first, actually a, a very great gunship. Mm -hmm. Very proud of it. Oh uh, yeah, it was, at the time, it was probably the, uh, the foremost attack helicopter in the world. We have some pictures that you've shared with us. Yeah. I want to share with the folks at home. Uh, first of all, tell us what we're seeing here. Uh, that's me uh, when I was younger and better looking. Uh, that's some of the guys in my platoon at Christmas. One of the guys had, uh, sent, had a Christmas tree sent. That's one of our aircraft, a silhouette of an aircraft. That's one of, one of ours, uh, one of mine. Uh, we had four rocket pods on. They're reloading the, the turret now with a 40 and a minigun on the other side. And uh, it's some actually shots of rockets uh, from the front seat of uh, Cobra. And you can see the, the motor still burning and the little, little orange sparks out there and the, the smoke and so forth. So uh, those are actually shots from, you know, 1970 mm -hmm. probably, uh, 45, 50 years ago. And that's one that's rolling in, uh, getting ready to attack a target. Uh, Cobra is very versatile. Great picture there, in my opinion. Uh, the way the main rotor blade is lined up perpendicular to the uh, fuselage. Doesn't and happen. you got the, the, uh, the uh, horizon in the background. Doesn't it's a great shot. Very often. It's a great shot. Yeah. I want to share with the folks at home, there it is again, but I want to share with the folks at home the jacket you brought in. And this is, I have to point out, is a personal jacket. Uh, it's not what you'd call standard fare by the military, but it, it, it's it, a memento of your activities in, it, it didn't in Vietnam. conform to military regs well, but it, i put it together for myself some of the patches that we had and all that stuff i you're wanted home, something you're home now let's if you would raise that up a little bit i want okay. folks at home to see the medals on the front and just hold it very still while they kind of zero in on that and and get a tight shot on the upper left i want to point out is a silver star can you go through some of the others for me yeah, and the next one over, it's a Distinguished Flying Cross. You can't see it, you have to look closely, but it's a, an Oak Leaf Cluster, so I was awarded two DFCs. The next one, the middle one, is a Bronze Star, and uh, then the the next medal is a is an Air Medal, and I've got, I, I'm trying to remember, I think 19 different awards or Air Medals that, based on your flight time and all mm -hmm. that. And then a couple of them are the V for Valor, which Raise were Raise just a little, Jim. There you go. And uh, then the, the last one is the green and white ribbon. That's Army Commendation Medal. Tell me what this is. Uh, that is uh, our unit patch. I was with the 101st. See, where is uh, here on this, this sleeve? Uh, I'm, I was with the 101st. And our battalion was the 4th of the 77th ARA, Aero Rocket Artillery. And this is the Cobra insignia. Yeah, and uh, then above it is, is the Cobra patch. And then on the other side, on here on this side, uh, one of our missions was working with special operations. Uh, the Army had top secret uh, missions into Laos and North Vietnam. Mac VSOG. Okay. And uh, anyway. How did these missions, how did the setup work on that? Uh, the the Mac VSOG? Uh, everything was top secret. Uh, we couldn't, when we the first time we flew, we had a signed document saying that we will not take pictures, we will not tell anybody where we're going, what we're doing, or send anything back home to that effect. Uh, basically, we, we were not supposed to be in Laos. We call it crossing the fence, getting out there. We, uh, Mac VSOG, which is Military Assistance Command Vietnam, had uh, teams at launch sites throughout Vietnam. We were working CCN, which is Command and Control North, MLT-2. And uh, that they were all special operations, special forces, and they put in usually six or eight man recon teams on the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos or up in North Vietnam. And uh, their job was recon. But it, they were some of the, 
uh, toughest guys I ever met. I mean, these, these guys, would, would, they were they're fearless. And uh, our job was to insert them. Now, we provided the gun cover. In addition to that, the 101st would also provide uh, the slicks, or the UH-1s, the UEs, to haul them out there. So we'd have a package of uh, usually two or three slicks, two covers, and then the Air Force provided uh, an OV-10 or O-2. And their call sign was Covey. Covey did all of the... Uh, uh, the the the, the uh, CCN or the uh, MACV SOG missions. How are, how are we on time? Well, they're checking that. Oh, good, good. I, I don't want to run out of time here because okay. I can sit and listen to this for a long time. Yeah. And uh, so uh, our job was to take this team, the six man, uh, the six or eight man team. And and I, uh, the first time that I uh, flew. We're in the briefing room, and in front of the briefing room is just a hooch, and they had a, had a fabric across a map. They pulled the fabric back, and I'm looking at it. Everything, nothing was South Vietnam. It's all Laos and North Vietnam. I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing here? <laughs> and uh, I heard a shuffling in the back of the room, and I looked back, and the team had come in. None of them had U.S. gear. They're all, half of them in ditch, half U.S., and uh, they face painted, and we, they would go out for four or five or six days. And that package of aircraft that took them out would also pull them back in when they got ready to come in. Mm -hmm. So they're our team to put out there and then bring back. And uh, their job was recon, but they did other things. They did prisoner snatches, uh, uh, anything to, uh, lots of different, a bunch of books written about it now. I mean, you can, uh, that, that paper we signed when we first got there said we couldn't divulge anything for 25 years. That 25-year period ended uh, probably the year 2000. So now all of those, those books of fiction that were written about these missions mm -hmm. have been re rewritten, and it's all fact. It's now. all fact now. Yeah, lot, were, lots of books out there. You took, uh, you took ground fire, didn't you? We took ground. We, didn't, we, we expected to get shot at every time. We sub, also, sub, our biggest support was the 101st and all, the, all the, uh, the, the soldiers from the 101st Airborne Division. Any SAMs? Uh, no. Uh, anyway, uh, that was our first mission, and we would be, we had a, we would fly with two aircraft mm -hmm. as a team, and uh, we'd be on two-minute alert, would have actually four sections of aircraft ready to fly, two-minute, five-minute, 15-minute, then a standby. As soon as the two-minute launch, the five-minute would move up and so forth. Two minutes out, we'd go out and shoot, make contact with the uh, people on the ground, the grunts are getting shot at, and they, they always, they're always in contact. They needed support badly. And uh, we knew they're in contact. We knew we we're going to get shot at. So we got shot at, I'd say, 90% of the time, and we expected it. Uh, we have about 30 seconds on, on this one area, but you said there were, there were points where you, you had crews that had two minutes' notice to get airborne. Well, yeah, we're set, we had our aircraft pre-flighted, fully armed, uh, fu fueled and so forth, sitting there ready to jump in and crank. And we had a process, we crank it up real quick, jump in, two pilots jump in, crank, section lead, would call, he would call tower for clearance, it gives the immediate and we're gone. Jim, thank you for your service, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate more than you know you taking time to come in, all no, right? No problem, thank you. We owe you a I great enjoyed day. It. Now I wanna, I wanna pass on something that you need to know about coming up, starting every Tuesday in September. In fact, uh, they'll start on the 12th instead of tonight, I was wrong about that, but they start on the 12th. Uh, these are documentaries dealing with uh, our men serving in Vietnam. The first one, They Were Our Fathers, that's seven o'clock on the 12th, Into Harm's Way on the 8th. On the 19th, you'll have Escape from Firebase Kate at seven o'clock, Jeremiah airs at eight o'clock. Voices from Vietnam reflecting at the wall at nine. Then on the 26th, We'll have American War Stories, Vietnam, from 7 o'clock until 10 p.m. And we'll be talking more about this as the days pass. Our thanks again to Jim Mitschke for coming in. Still to come, the subject is the Rogers County Fair, where you'll find something for just about everybody right after this. <laughs>